to you. The word of God, the words of life. We've come to minister Christ to you. We've come that you might know salvation. That you may know everlasting life in Jesus Christ, our Lord. And so we've come to serve you, to minister to you in this way. We have three Bibles where you might pick up the words of life and see that the things that are proclaimed to you tonight are so. We have gospel tracts where you might know the way of salvation for yourself. And we also would love to pray for you. If there are any matters that weigh heavy on your heart, especially if you feel troubled in any way, we have come to serve you in these ways. Tonight I would like to preach the gospel to you out of God's own word from the book of the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 3, verse 18, 19, and 20. Please give your attention to God's holy word. But those things which God before had showed by the mouth of all his prophets, that Christ should suffer, he hath so fulfilled. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, when the times of refreshing shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things which God hath spoken by the mouth of all his holy prophets since the world began. Amen. This has been God's holy word. Friends, as we think on the word of God that has been read just now, we see the purpose for God sending his son into the world to suffer. He has suffered as he has prophesied in the word of God. For since the beginning of the world, God has prophesied that he would send his son into the world to suffer. After man fell into sin, God prophesied that he would send his son into the world to be bruised by the serpent Satan, but that his son would crush Satan underfoot. And this our Lord Jesus Christ did almost 2,000 years ago on the cross when God sent him into the world to suffer for the sins of his people. You might ask, why has Christ come into the world? Maybe you've never heard it before. Why did God send his only begotten son into the world? It was to suffer for the sins of God's people. But their sins, as we heard here in this text, would be blotted out. That their sins would be erased utterly. That they would be reconciled to God through the blood of his only begotten son. This is why the Bible commands all men everywhere to repent. Because their sins have caused a separation between them and God. And God could have left us in this condition. God could have said, all men, all men, because we justly do deserve hell and damnation. The least of my sins deserves damnation. But God, out of his grace, has sent his son into the world. <coughs> God has sent his son into the world that by his precious blood, which is the blood of God, because it is God's blood uh, counting the man, Jesus Christ's blood as his own, as God has taken on in the Son of God, a human nature in the incarnation. Through that precious blood, God has blot away and has blotted away all the sins of all of his and all he requires of you to have this salvation is to put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. He says that if you will repent of your sin, if you will turn away from your sin, and you will turn to Jesus Christ, he says he will bring times of refreshment on you. He says here, this is the promise, repent ye therefore, that means turn to God in Jesus Christ and be converted. 
that your sins may be blotted out. Isn't that a marvelous word? Isn't that a marvelous thought? That your sins can be blotted out. But this is the difference between the true religion and false religions. In the true religion, the sins of all God's people are blotted out by the work of the Son of God. They are utterly erased. They are washed away. God's people don't have to earn their salvation. They freely receive Jesus Christ and the blotting away of their sins. This is the great hope of the gospel in the word of God. Not that we work and earn our salvation, but that Jesus Christ has earned salvation for his people. And that by his perfect life and by the travails of his soul on the cross, as he suffered for God's people, our salvation is secure in him. Not in us, not in us, but he saves. And the Bible says he saves to the uttermost so that all who come to God through him have a blessed eternity before them. But even in this life, you can have the blessing, that supreme blessing. What is the supreme blessing? It is to know God. It is to know God in Christ. And all who come to God by him will know him and will be blessed with knowing their creator intimately and beautifully by the Holy Spirit. Friends, this gospel is a gospel of grace. Do you even know what the word gospel means? I didn't know what it meant for so long in my life. It means good news. It means good news, which means that all of salvation is of the Lord and not of ourselves. And isn't that good news? All that you have done can be utterly blotted away you notice that as I read the scripture, it doesn't say some of your sins may be blotted away, but all sins, all of your sins can be blotted away. Whatever you have done, whatever has troubled your conscience, the Lord Jesus Christ can forgive. Why he even forgave some who crucified him. He said, Father, forgive them and forgive them he did. And if he will forgive the sin of crucifying him, will he not forgive all the sins that whoever comes to him have committed? If you have committed great sins like I have, Jesus Christ can blot those out because he saves, not we. We don't save ourselves. He saves, and he saves completely. What a thing it is to repent of the Lord Jesus Christ and, and to believe his gospel. Have you ever wondered what it will be like to meet God? One day you will meet God. I will meet God. And the question is, what will you do when you meet God? What will you say when God says, why should I let you into a blessed eternity? Why should I not send you to the other place of eternal torment? Will you say, well, I was pretty good in my life. I wasn't a murderer. I didn't kill anyone. I, I, didn't, I didn't take from uh, widow's homes, stuff like that. God will say, no, my word says there is none good, no, not one. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I have sinned greatly, my friends. My hope is not that I am good. My hope is that I have a Savior, a mighty Savior who is mighty to save, Jesus Christ the Lord, who was sent into the earth to save sinners by the Father, so that on that cross he paid to the uttermost all the debt of all those who would ever believe in him, that he would blot out, as the Scripture says, all their sins, to erase them so that God would remember them no more as the scripture promises us. That's where my hope is. That's where any man's hope could be. Not in their goodness. No, because our, our best works are as filthy rags. You know it. You know it. You know that all that you have done, there's a bit of self in there. Not a bit, a lot of bit. A lot of self. 
you must come to the Lord Jesus Christ. He says, if you will repent and be converted, your sins will be blotted out. And he says, times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. What does that mean? It means that the Holy Ghost will come and He will give you such refreshment. You will know the joy of the Lord. You will know the joy that you are saved utterly, that God is your Father. What a wonderful thought that is. To say that those who come to Christ have God as their Father. What refreshment there is. And Jesus Christ said that all who come to him, he will give rest. He will give you rest and refreshment. So come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Do not tarry. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Do not delay, but come to Christ. You don't, the Bible says you come, essentially God says in his word, you just come. That means you can come as you are. You come with your sins. You, you come with all of your pollution. You come with all of the ungodliness and uncleanness. But you come to Jesus Christ by faith in Him. And He will save and save to the uttermost. This is the hope of the gospel. This is the hope of God. And these are the things that God has promised in His Word, in His Bible. This is the truth of God the gospel truth as it were that Jesus Christ has come to save sinners even the chief he said he did not come for the righteous why? there is not one that is righteous all have sinned, all of us myself, all those here who are here to witness of the grace of God, we all say we are sinners but we have a great savior and you can have him too friends you can have Christ. He says, come and take of me without Christ. He is a free gift from the Father. Jesus Christ is a free gift. The greatest gift that the world could ever know and ever could have. And God says, unlike these stores around us, he says, come and take my son without Christ. He says, you don't have to buy him. You don't have to earn him, because no one can. He's too precious. You simply come and take Christ without Christ. This has been the word of God. If you have any questions, please come to us. We have gospel tracts. We'd love to pray with you. Is there any burdens that you have? We have three copies of the Holy Scripture. You see, we don't want you to take these things on my word. We want to take, if you want to take these things of God's word, God commends the man or woman who opens up his Bible and sees these things are so. So come, see that these things are so. Come, know Christ, take Christ for yourself, that you might be saved and have everlasting life. Those who believe on him have an eternity of blessedness before them. May God cause you to know the Lord Jesus and come to have everlasting life in Him. Amen.